And one of the great figures of this is uh, Ibn Arabi. And we only have here this one example that we can go through. Uh, um, gentle now doves. And you can see a lot of the same elements being uh, dealt with here, being, uh, being manipulated and considered from different angles. The, uh, a lot of the same conceits, a lot of the same structures, a lot of the same beliefs and philosophical underpinnings that we see in the, uh, the, the, the more northern European uh, exemplars are finding a kind of new expression, a new voice uh, in these, uh, these writers of, uh, of Al-Andalus. Gentle now, doves of the thornberry and moringa thicket, don't add to my heartache your sighs. Gentle now on your sad cooing will re or your sad cooing will reveal the love I hide, the sorrow I hide away. I echo back in the evening, in the morning, echo the longing of a lovesick lover, the moaning of the lost. In a grove at Gada, spirits wrestled, bending the limbs down over me, passing me away. They brought yearning, breaking of the heart, and other new twists of pain, putting me through it. Who is there for me in Jem and the stoning ground at Mina? Who for me at Tamarisk Grove or at the way station in Naman? Hour by hour, they rupture my heart in rapture, in love ache, and touch my pillars with a kiss. As the best of creation circled at Kaaba, with the reason, which reason with its proofs called unworthy, he kissed the stones there, and he was entrusted with the word. What, what, what is this house, what is the house of stone compared to a man or woman? They swore how often they'd never change, piling up vows. She who dies herself red with henna is faithless. A white blazed gazelle is an amazing sight. Red dye signaling, eyelids hinting, pasture between breastbone and innards. Marvel, a garden among the flames. My heart can take on any form. For gazelles, a meadow a cloister for monks, for the idols, sacred, sacred ground, Kaaba for the circling pilgrim, the tables of the Torah, the scrolls of the Koran. I profess the religion of love wherever its caravan turns along the way. That is the belief, the faith I keep. Like Bashir, Hind and her sister, love mad Kays and the, and the lost Layla, Maya and her lover, Gailan. Another kind of flowing, almost tripping over itself pace going on here. A lot of passionate uh, references, a great enthusiasm, let's say. Um, but, you know, what jumps out? Well, at the beginning, we see more birds. Doves! What's with the birds? Gentle now, doves of the thornberry and moringa thicket, don't add to my heartache your size. I don't know what thornberry or moringa thicket looks like. I don't really care, but I'm in a realm of nature here. I'm in that same familiar text of the physical world that is used as a scrim over the divine spark within it. Don't add to my heartache your sighs. There's so much sighing going on in the Middle Ages over love. We're always sighing because we sigh when we are, in, this, in essence, swept away where we have our breath taken away by an experience of love, of divine rapture, of <sighs> melancholy. These deep-seated emotions inspire a kind of 
vulnerability that is expressed in a sigh. I echo back in the evening, in the morning, echo the longing of the lovesick lo lover, the moaning of the lost, more lost, uh, love sick is another common thing. You are sick with love. Uh, the more songs you echo back, all of this sound, this sonorous sensibility, the song of nature, the cacophony of nature, the symphony of nature, always swelling around you and you're trying to make sense of it. Um, these conflicting impulses for attraction and revulsion of the natural beauty. Is it like overwhelming? Is it overpowering? Is it annoying? Are you sick of the birds or are you entranced by them? Are you attracted by them? Are you just starting to sense the different trillings within the cloud of noise? All of that is pushing and pulling you at different times. Uh, in, a grove, in, the, in a grove of Gada, spirits wrestled, bending the limbs down over me, passing me away. Bending limbs down over me in a grove? Uh, well, there is, and you can read the footnotes, there is some, uh, some specific... Uh, uh, religious reference to that, scriptural reference uh, going on there. But it is also, I have to say, the way it is being phrased, the way it's being expressed, it sounds a little sexy. Bending the limbs down over me, you know, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of on the line there. They brought yearning, breaking through the heart and other new twists of pain putting me through it. The sense of suffering. Love is suffering. We all know that. Love is pain because that pain and joy are two sides of the same coin. You can never have one without the other, just like God and earth, just like the spiritual and the worldly. Love and pain are two indissoluble uh, halves of the same single element. But that pain is also a sign of that same vulnerability, that same sense of, oh, geez, I'm, I, uh, I'm just trying to figure out the world. I'm just trying to get by. And I could get swept away like that. Accidents happen. Fate is cruel. Medicine is not particularly advanced at this stage. Uh, you are vulnerable. You are completely subject to divine whim. The, uh, that sense of twists of pain, the breaking of the heart and other new twists of pain. Pain, I think, is a specific and very interesting word there. Again, translation. But pain is physical, but we're talking about an emotional state. So already they're blurring that line between the physical and the emotional. Uh, the, the, who is there for me in Jam and the stoning grounds at Mina? Who for me at Tamarisk Grove or at the way station of Daman? These are devotional uh, stations along the uh, uh, along the path of a uh, uh, a, a pilgrimage. Hour by hour, they circle my heart in rapture, which is a kind of joyous surrendering to divinity, and love ache, which is a particularly earthly, human uh, experience of the same basic sensation. That idea of rapture being slightly more religious, perhaps, slightly more spiritual, but love ache being slightly more human, almost uh, uh, physical. The, uh, that combination of the two that is never really one thing or the other, it's always both in conflict at the same time and trying to figure out what you are. Uh, at the best of creation, circled the Kaaba for reasons, for reason with its proofs, 
which reason with its proofs called unworthy. Reason with its proofs. Here we have more philosophy, more, oh, I don't know, logic getting played out. Reason, the ability to think. Proofs are the little equations that you work out in logic, saying if this, then that. So we can say this. He's having a little fun with that same scholastic tradition of trying to impose a great intellectual framework around the enormity of a divine creation. Are we up to that as human beings? Can we encompass the mind of God and figure out the architecture of his universe? Or are we completely at a loss with it? He kissed the stones there, and he was entrusted, and he, and he was entrusted with the word, entrusted with the word. Well, that's the role of a prophet. Dare I say, the prophet Muhammad, possibly. They swore how often they'd never changed, piling up vows. She who dies herself, red with henna, is faithless. A white gazelle is an amazing sight. Red dye, signaling eyelids, hinting. Pasture between breastbone and innards. Marble, a garden among the flames. My heart can take on any form for gazelles, a meadow, a cloister for monks. I don't know what the hell is going on there. There's a lot of little symbols happening there. Some of them are natural. Some of them are religious. Some of them are cultural. Uh, gazelles in a meadow, or is that like a cloister for the monks? I don't know. Uh, cloister is where monks hang out. A meadow is where gazelles hang out. Is there an equivalence being posited there? Are monks like gazelles? I don't know. I can't imagine they run very well in those outfits. But the idea is being thrown out there that there is a kind of equivalence. But even in that, there are so many other things getting tossed around. A white blaze gazelle is an amazing sight, red dye signaling, eyelid tinting. I have no idea what the hell's going on there. Something is just beyond my understanding. Something is just too much for my head to get around. And that's okay. You don't have to have the answer because we're dealing in a realm that is more mystical than logical. He's dispelled with the idea, somewhat snarkily, about logic. The proofs. Reason. Silly. So he goes headlong into this passionate uh, evocation of symbols and very abstract phenomena, and maybe it has specific references along the way. They usually do, but I don't really know what is being said there. But I'm being swept along by the language itself. I'm being brought into this rushing torrent of imagery and art. That is like being swept up by faith or divinity itself. I profess the religion of love. We've heard that before. The religion of love, the cult of love, this belief of love as a kind of religious practice itself. Participating in love is participating in the divine. Wherever its caravan turns along the way, that is the belief, the faith I keep. Caravan, a nice little spin on that. The caravans were famous for the travelers, the pilgrimage towards Mecca. But of course, this guy is writing it from Spain, where eh, you probably don't need the caravan so much. He's writing in a very, uh, I think he's in Cordoba, very cushy surroundings. And at the end, all of those little names, these are characters in, uh, in familiar characters in love poems, love stories, uh, like Bishir, Hind, and her sister, Lavmad Kays, and the lost Layla, Myla, and her lover, Gayla. Why end that? Why end just throwing out 
names or titles and literary references and all those things that everybody always hates. Why? Well, I don't know. I'm just spitballing here, but I'm thinking, well, okay, what could it mean? This is a story with some very specific and explicit spiritual references, religious references, that then ends on a note of art. Is that an equivalence between scripture and art? The scripture being laid side by side with not just art, but art about love. Is it the fact that it is art, that it is love poetry, love stories, these grand lovers of yore? Is that another kind of scripture? Is that a human representation or metaphor of the divine spirit itself? Religion itself is a kind of poetry here. And poetry is a kind of religion. And those two sides of that coin get flipped back and forth. And you can't divide between them. There is no way to make reason out of this. There is no way to make a divine proof out of this. Something logical, something Aristotelian, something intellectual. It is all a whole that you can't necessarily parse out. There is no great answer at the end of this poem. It just references back to the act of reading itself. The nature of reading is the nature of humanity. Reading the book of God in nature. Reading the book of God in the experience of love and in the experience of love celebrating one's humanity which is at once yourself at your most animalistic and yourself at its most divine. Those polarities, those dualities are always tugging at you. And that's what makes this really exciting. 